Gold does not announce its presence. It does not glitter in the darkness of the deep crust, nor does it form in dramatic eruptions or violent fractures alone. Instead, it accumulates silently, atom by atom, carried by fluids that move through rocks so slowly that a single meter of migration may take thousands of years. The largest gold deposits on Earth are not accidents of nature. They are the final expression of geological patience. To understand them is to follow a trail that leads far beyond mines and maps, into the deepest processes that shape continents themselves. Long before gold became a symbol of wealth or power, it was already embedded within the Earth's evolving crust. Its journey began in environments inaccessible to direct observation, subduction zones, deep metamorphic belts, ancient river systems, and magma chambers buried kilometers below the surface. Each major gold province on Earth is therefore a geological archive, preserving evidence of tectonic collisions, fluid circulation, and chemical conditions that no longer exist in the modern world. Gold as a geological element. From a geochemical perspective, gold is an unusual element. It is chemically inert, resistant to oxidation, and highly incompatible within most rock-forming minerals. These properties explain both its rarity and its tendency to concentrate under specific conditions. In average continental crust, gold occurs at concentrations of approximately 1 to 4 parts per billion. Economic deposits require enrichment factors of tens of thousands, a transformation that only very specific geological systems can achieve. Gold is most commonly transported in hydrothermal fluids as complexes with sulfur, chlorine, or carbon dioxide. Temperature, pressure, fluid composition, and redox conditions control whether gold remains dissolved or precipitates. A slight change in any of these parameters, cooling, pressure drop, fluid mixing, or chemical reaction with host rocks, can cause gold to crystallize from solution. This sensitivity explains why gold deposits are often localized along faults, shear zones, and lithological boundaries. The role of tectonics in gold concentration. The largest gold deposits are inseparable from tectonic activity. Stable cratons, active orogenic belts, and ancient sedimentary basins all play distinct roles in gold mineralization. Plate tectonics provides the energy and structural framework necessary for fluid migration and metal concentration. During continental collision, thickened crust undergoes metamorphism, releasing large volumes of fluid. These metamorphic fluids are capable of dissolving and transporting gold over great distances. Deep-seated fault systems act as conduits, focusing fluid flow and creating sites of repeated mineral deposition. Over millions of years, these processes can transform diffuse gold into high-grade ore bodies. Orogenic gold deposits, records of mountain building. Orogenic gold deposits represent one of the most significant sources of gold globally. They are typically associated with ancient convergent plate boundaries and formed during episodes of crustal shortening and mountain building. These deposits are structurally controlled, commonly hosted within quartz veins formed in brittle ductal shear zones. The Yilgarn Craton of Western Australia offers a classic example. Here, gold mineralization is closely tied to Archean tectonic events more than 2.6 billion years ago. The persistence of deep crustal faults allowed gold-bearing fluids to circulate repeatedly, enriching existing structures rather than creating entirely new ones. This process of structural reactivation is a recurring theme in major gold provinces worldwide. Similar systems are found in the Canadian Shield, particularly within the Abitibi Greenstone Belt, where gold deposits align with regional deformation zones. These belts demonstrate that gold mineralization is rarely isolated. Instead, it is part of a broader tectonic system that evolves over geological time. Carlin-type gold deposits. Invisible wealth. Among the most enigmatic gold systems on Earth are Carlin-type deposits. First recognized in Nevada, these deposits challenged traditional models of gold mineralization. Unlike vein-hosted systems, Carlin deposits contain gold particles so small that they remain invisible even under optical microscopy. The gold in these systems is dispersed within sedimentary host rocks, particularly carbonate formations. Hydrothermal fluids interacted chemically with the host rocks, replacing original minerals and trapping gold within Arsenian pyrite. This process required precise geochemical conditions, including specific sulfur activity and fluid composition. Despite decades of research, fundamental questions remain. The exact source of the gold, whether magmatic, metamorphic, or derived from deep crustal reservoirs, continues to be debated. 
What is clear is that Carlin type deposits represent a unique intersection of structure, stratigraphy, and fluid chemistry, magmatic hydrothermal systems, and porphyry gold. Gold is also closely associated with magmatic systems, particularly in subduction related environments. Porphyry deposits form when large volumes of magma stall within the crust, releasing metal rich fluids as they cool. These fluids permeate surrounding rocks creating extensive zones of alteration and mineralization. The Graberg deposit in Indonesia stands as one of the most prominent examples. Situated within a complex tectonic setting, Graberg contains vast quantities of both copper and gold. Its formation reflects prolonged magmatic activity combined with efficient fluid focusing along structural pathways. Above porphyry systems, epithermal gold deposits form at shallow crustal levels. These deposits record the final stages of hydrothermal activity, often associated with volcanic centers. Their textures and mineral assemblages provide insight into fluid boiling, pressure fluctuations, and rapid chemical changes. Paleoplacer deposits, gold from ancient rivers. Perhaps the most extraordinary gold deposits on Earth are paleoplacers, particularly those of the Witwatersrand Basin in South Africa. These deposits differ fundamentally from hydrothermal systems. The gold was originally eroded from older source rocks and transported mechanically by ancient rivers, eventually settling in sedimentary basins. The age of the Witwatersrand deposits, over 2.7 billion years, raises profound questions about early earth conditions. At that time, atmospheric oxygen levels were extremely low, preventing gold from dissolving during transport. This allowed physical accumulation on an unprecedented scale. The preservation of these deposits suggests remarkable geological stability. Subsequent burial, metamorphism, and deformation modified the original sediments but did not destroy the gold concentration. As a result, the Witwatersrand Basin accounts for a substantial proportion of all gold ever mined. Time, reworking, and supergiant deposits. Large gold deposits rarely form in a single geological episode. Instead, they are often the product of multiple mineralizing events superimposed on one another. Early gold concentrations may be upgraded by later fluid flow, deformation, or metamorphism. This reworking enhances grade and continuity, transforming modest deposits into world-class resources. Structural inheritance plays a critical role. Ancient faults and lithological boundaries tend to remain zones of weakness, repeatedly exploited by geological processes. The largest deposits are therefore located where favorable structures intersect long-lived tectonic environments. Implications for Modern Exploration Understanding the geological mysteries of major gold deposits has practical implications. Modern exploration strategies rely on recognizing deep structural controls, alteration halos, and tectonic histories rather than surface expressions alone. Advances in geophysics, isotopic geochemistry, and 3D modeling now allow geologists to detect systems buried beneath cover sequences. Gold exploration has become an exercise in reading Earth's deep time history. Each discovery confirms that economic geology is inseparable from fundamental geological science. Gold as a record of planetary evolution. The world's largest gold deposits are more than sources of metal. They are geological narratives, written over billions of years, preserving evidence of how continents formed, collided, and stabilized. Gold's rarity makes its concentration extraordinary, but its geological significance makes it invaluable. To study gold deposits is to study the Earth's capacity for organization amid chaos, its ability to transform dispersed atoms into concentrated systems through time, pressure, and motion. In this sense, gold is not merely a resource, but a geological memory of the planet itself.